Um, you you alluded to demand. I mean, India, of course, is 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 becoming more and more attractive because, as we were talking about some time back, there is a clear case of you know uh, a huge demand panning out, particularly for the tertiary uh, healthcare yeah, yeah. Uh, in the metros. What is your solution to that, and where? Why do you think that's happening? See, first, I think, as I said previously, I think first of all. Our longevity is not there. I think you know because of the infectious diseases, a mm. lot of you know uh, lives you were lost mm. at an earlier stage. Mm. Now with this uh, vaccination prevention mm. and uh, little changes in the uh, uh, good diet, mm. and uh, maybe now I think we see more and more physical activity. They are becoming more conscious about it. So those things are adding to longer lifespan. Mm. So our average lifespan has increased. Mm. The childhood mortality mm. has gone down. Mm. The stillbirth has gone down. Mm. Even in the small rural areas, villages, mm. uh, some primary care facilities are available where the basic uh, routine uh, things are taken care of. So I think that is also uh, the reason why you know, like we are becoming more and more conscious. Mm. Uh, maybe some time back we were looking at a possibly a fast food joint, but mm. now I think the the country started with fast food joints. So, so I just just one small point there. You you talked about the pressure. I, I think what what you alluded to then was the pressure being created in the metros, yeah. and therefore where the cost of operation is very high already, and therefore the profitability suffers. So, what is your recommendation in terms of you know using maybe tier two or B towns? And I'm a very strong believer in that. You know, previously I think all the uh, professionals they used to prefer to live in metro. Mm. But I think the trend is that now they want to also move on the B-town because the life there is less competitive, it's less stressful. Mm. And at the same time, the facilities, a lot of facilities like education, school, colleges, mm. you know, the professional uh, mm. colleges, mm. they are all available. Mm. So I am firmly, I believe that uh, more and more investments are needed in B-town. Mm. And I would very strongly recommend hub and spoke sort of arrangement mm. where we have, uh, we take care of a primary and secondary mm. healthcare. Okay. Mm. Uh, maybe for time being, we can leave primary healthcare mm. to the government, mm. which is providing them. But we should look for a secondary healthcare mm. and maybe have the arrangements mm. and collaborations mm. with a bigger uh, group of hospitals and the chains mm. of hospitals. Mm which can provide the tertiary health care. So you have a continuity without much investment. Hmm. And it's a win-win situation for B-Town as well as for metros. So what we're saying is that there is a possibility, there is a larger market available in B-Town for investors to look at, especially when it comes to the medical uh, or the hospital services. With a lesser uh, investment, investment and lesser competition. Hmm. And possibly hmm. they can become really a source of education, mm -hmm. not only on the medical education, but uh, preventive education, you know, mm -hmm. and all sort of vaccinations, etc., mm -hmm. which uh, may or may not be possible for government to provide. Mm -hmm. So there are larger opportunities yeah. clearly available for investment in the B town and the towns outside of the, yeah. the greater yes. uh, metros are concerned. So uh, continuing the, 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 the conversation about, you know, the population and the, how the demographics uh, have changed in India, uh, we also see changes happening in the insurance sector, in the yeah. medical insurance, the healthcare insurance. What are the changes that you've been seeing? Well, I think previously, uh, either the patients were going to a government hospital, which was free, of course, mm. or they were coming to private nursing homes or mm. private smaller hospitals, mm. which were 100% paid mm. out of pocket only. But uh, since uh, the private, uh, I think then the, we had the government agencies, mm. the government insurance agencies. Mm. We, and uh, now when it, the market opened up for international brands mm. uh, of healthcare and insurance services, I think more and more people are going. And I think most of the, the even the employment conditions are that you have to have a medical insurance mm. before you join. Mm. That is a very good sign, mm. you know. I think we are having practically um, uh, very popular brands uh, in the insurance sector, which has come. Mm. Second thing which I see is that uh, people have started, previously they were, there was no health budget mm. for any family. Mm. Now they 
are conscious about it because uh, healthcare is uh, rather expensive mm. compared to other things which were available. Mm. So I feel they are putting up some money. Mm. They are joining the insurance companies. They are participating into mm. their this thing. And second change within the insurance thing which we have seen is a high value insurance. Mm. Previously, there is to be very nominal upper limit to which you can go. Mm. Now we have practically unlimited uh, insurance, uh, health insurance. Mm. Previously, there were so many diseases where there was a limitation that okay for if it is uh, oncology or it's a cancer, then only this much money will be paid. Mm. But now those things are opening up. So mm. a lot of people, uh, because of this, and of course they can spare that sort of money. Mm every year to mm. pay for the insurance premium. Mm. And as I said, the younger population, uh, younger group, younger generations, mm. they take it as a part of uh, their own investment or expenditure, you know, mm. so which is a good sign. So it, it, I, I think that's a, that's a fantastic point. You also talked about, you know, some of the, the, uh, the diseases or, or the elective uh, surgeries or considered elective at that time, like bariatric yeah. and those who are not covered. Uh, neither under CGHS or, or by some of the private uh, uh, organizations. The other uh, angle to this or the psychology, how that's changing is one, I need to be covered. And second is the preventive health care. Yeah. That again is becoming a very attractive investment proposition. Yeah. So what can be done there? Uh, by Mr. Well, as I said, you know, like uh, even if we are talking about preventive aspect, I think there are so many uh, areas where we can really work on. Yeah. And today people are willing to pay yeah. for that. Yeah. Uh, I would say more we are seeing uh, on the investigating side mm -hmm. because I see at least the higher income group people, mm -hmm. they are getting their blood tests done regularly mm -hmm. and uh, also there are so many employees and organizations which insist and which get all their employees mm -hmm. sort of have the preventive health checkups mm -hmm. and take action on that. That is also, I think, something which has come in last few years. Mm. So if somebody has got some problem, uh, he's supposed to address that problem, not to, after having a preventive health checkup, you come across a disease and you just sit on it, you know. Mm. So they're insisting. Mm. And uh, not uh, long back, but I think 11 uh, years back, mm. we made a presentation to the government that uh, diabetes is becoming very common and uh, one of the common factors which we've seen is uh, obesity mm. related with diabetes, mm. what we call is a diversity. Mm. So we uh, sort of made a presentation to the government. There was a repeated sort of uh, uh, presentations done on various levels. Mm. And now central government health scheme mm. uh, has accepted mm. for the last uh, seven years, mm. accepted bariatric as a surgery. Mm. And not going too far, I think a, a day or two back, the insurance companies have also accepted that uh, they are going to pay for mm. uh, bariatric and obesity surgery mm. because previously it was uh, uh, considered as a cosmetic surgery and mm. always um, denied mm. uh, for any mm. medical bills. Mm. But now it is accepted. Mm. So I think with the changing time, the changing horizon, also the social pressure mm. and political pressures which are coming. Mm. And the political pressures are coming to the hospitals, to the organization. Mm. And I am talking in a positive manner mm. because you are supposed to uh, provide you know, services to the poor people also. Mm. But if I say if, if it is done well mm. and if it is done for really poor people, mm. it is very beneficial. Mm. And CSR activities which mm. we have seen, mm. uh, most of the CSR activities are you know, diverted uh, towards uh, health. Either it is a prevention, vaccination, mm. uh, cancer, and congenital uh, diseases mm. and problems. Mm. So I think that is a good sign. Mm. And we can participate into that. So mm. there could be investments uh, which can provide uh, services, CSR activities, mm. help the big organizations to help them. Mm. And I'm sure some innovative young uh, person will uh, come out with some apps mm. and uh, we have seen changes. We are now not keeping the patients longer in the ICU. We are moving them into a lesser, you know, less expensive, more uh, 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 controlled atmosphere. Mm. 
Then we have got mobile devices now. There are so many mobile devices where the patients in their room, mm. and through Wi-Fi we are able to monitor mm. their uh, vitals and other. Mm. So this way, we I would say that uh, the country, uh, first of all, because it's a democracy, mm. a very fair democracy, a strong government mm. for at least a couple of years, um, which we have we can foresee, mm. and intention of the government. Mm. also is very clear mm. so i feel that it's a very good time mm. which gives you uh, enough time to prepare mm. and enough time to execute mm. and enough time to bear the fruits of mm. the result mm. so i mean good, good that you brought up the point about you know uh, the government because healthcare is a sector as, as you said i mean it's been a cost center yeah and uh, and very capital intensive especially for groups like max themselves i mean putting an infrastructure like this takes a lot of capital yeah. and the returns take time to come uh but do you think uh, the indian government today from an economic standpoint has the will and the skill to put the ecosystem together because it's not just uh, it's it's more importantly for example doctors yeah. you know what are they doing for educating and bringing out more 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 and more doctors who are competent we talk about going to town b town c and so on and so forth people will come to town a because they expect the a class doctors yeah so i think uh, the interesting uh, name given to this is politico economics right mm -hmm. so some government may be very good in politics and some government may be very good with economics i think the successful government according to my little understanding of economics has to have a politico economic approach that you should have the political intention to have a good economics mm. and the economics will only flourish and do well mm. when the health of the country and the population is good mm. so this word i think is a not a very old word but i think recently coined mm. uh, by the economist mm. and uh, that is what i think uh, most of the economists are hopeful mm. that with the present government which has got almost now uh, i would say little more than four four and a half years now mm. still with them mm. and maybe the next i think with if they continue with the same intention and uh, i am very confident that this political economic health mm. um, approach of this government is there mm. and this will do well mm. sometimes and and uh, course correction which we have seen sometimes i think in the recent uh, thing which is which uh, uh, is coming up is the with the us now they are trying to lift away lift that uh, ceiling for stent and uh, joints mm. and the latest things can come mm. i'm sure it might have been there on the agenda also mm. so these are a good sign so you correct your approach mm. sometimes you may take a decision for some reason mm. and you change that decision for some reason mm. but it is for all for uh, good this mm. thing for industry as you know mm. has uh, the reduced tax structure one of the lowest tax is uh, industries are paying now mm. uh, same uh, medical facilities are almost you can say tax free for mm. most of the mm. things mm. so that way i think the government is likely to continue because government needs to provide health services uh and only private sector mm. and capital investment at p um, uh, group mm. we can really provide that government cannot do it mm. they know it very well mm. and that's why i think they have a reasonably positive approach towards it and i'm optimist uh, about it mm. so i'll say i'll just take that the the queue here and and talk about uh, the different areas of uh, you know opportunities when it comes to investments and we talk, talked about ecosystem we talked about uh, primary healthcare as the uh, the opportunity for investors we also talked about insurance uh, even though it's highly regulated but there are opportunities there uh, education we have we've just briefly touched but i want to talk about the medical devices you know we just had a news yeah. sometime back where an apple watch seemingly saved a man's yeah. life and uh, and there have been several you know the fitbit helping us with the the, the heart rate etc etc what do you see is the future of medical devices in india and 
the adoption you know we know that india caught on to whatsapp very very soon yeah, yeah. what is the adoption that you expect of there well i think the younger generation is really very very adoptive okay. and they i would say they adopt it faster than what is expected mm -hmm. you know and which is a very good sign mm -hmm. and uh, uh, it doesn't matter uh, at the moment i think with the, the penetration of uh, e technology penetration of mobile telephones mm -hmm. smartphones uh, way to communicate uh, smart televisions etc i think the penetration uh, is very difficult to imagine how far we are going to go mm. because i think it is changing every day mm. uh, in a positive manner and uh, the same thing is happening with make in india mm. so there are certain areas in the medical field mm. especially the devices or something related with the medical the government is providing lot of uh, help support and hang holding mm. for such industry mm. uh, it does not mean that we stop importing some of the devices but at the same time we are encouraging mm. so the both things can go parallel mm. and with the population in the population of the country and you know the vast country their demands are very high and uh, uh, as and when we keep on making uh, our devices in the country Uh, especially may not be the tertiary care devices like artificial heart mm -hmm. or left uh, ventricle or something like that mm -hmm. but i think most of the common devices like the pacemakers stents mm -hmm. joints mm -hmm. and various types of uh, uh, cosmetic processes i think there is very good scope and especially when the this government has got make in india Uh, team that even compels them mm. to encourage uh, this something like i think uh, for three years they are not um, the government uh, i think is is free uh, no taxes for three years something like that you know those i think anybody who is interested in that will go into more details and mm. see but these things are coming and i have seen in uh, few years i think every budget brings some positivity towards that side mm. so that means that there is not a uh, short term they are looking at the long term i think mm. and now indian government has got a lot of spare money for infrastructure development which mm. is there mm. Mm. so we hope that you know they will uh, they will encourage more collaboration aggregation i mean we we saw practo for example on the start of the let's say startup so the new age Uh, developments so practo came in and which brought in of course uh, the aggregation of bringing everybody to the doctors to a single platform uh, one specific question i mean since we just moved to the uh, uh, to the startup era is what are the other innovations which have not happened i mean i i know that you spoke at oxford some time mm, back and yeah. it was a it was a very celebrated address that you that you gave at the house of uh, commons i think no it was uh, to uh, oxford university wow so so what is your sense of what you saw what you see in the western world you travel to us so several times you speak at so many forums what is your sense of where we are today versus what the western world has already seen and what will it take for us to get there well in a way i would say that now uh, uh, our voice is heard okay people more than that i think uh, the western world also wants to hear us out and know our view points mm -hmm. know uh, what the the visions are or what the country is mm -hmm. so you just mentioned about the oxford university so i was um, requested to give, deliver a keynote address to uh, the world congress there mm -hmm. and the keynote the topic which was given to me was how south asians differ medically mm -hmm. from the western world mm -hmm. and unless you really look at Mm. i think except that you know like we have got all the same uh, organs all over the uh, you know mankind but every organ behaves differently in south asia mm. may it be heart may it be child birth may it be uh, number of fat cells in the newborn mm. versus is you know uh, abdominal fat in the asians mm. is different than the western world mm. so we differ quite a bit mm. you know our cellular level also we differ our mitochondria is much more uh, uh, bigger than the western cellular uh, 
mitochondria, mm. which is a cell controlling uh, mechanism, you know. Mm. So this way, as you go more and more. So first of all, I think our voice is out. It's not only on the medical side, but on the economic side. Mm. And I'm sure uh, the world has witnessed uh, our prime minister mm. who addressed to mm. in Houston, mm. which was uh, attended by almost 50 to 60,000 uh, audience. Uh, and also the presence of um, the president of uh, USA, which is unheard, you know. So this way, I feel that uh, it is not only the voices of Indians, but I think the political voice is also become mm -hmm. our prime minister is leading the world uh, forums on various issues, and his his viewpoints are you know, taken very seriously, so, yes. so which is a good news. I think we all heard about the howdy Modi yeah. uh, and how did it go. Yeah. Well, I'll just take a small pause here mm -hmm. and I would request the audiences to uh, to start preparing with their questions and coming forward. We will be, uh, they're just penultimate questions that I have for Dr. Chobe and then we'll be taking your questions uh, in just about uh, 10 minutes from now. And uh, so, so just just to uh, to take our conversation forward, we talked about the government support and particularly on the green field side. We also when we when we launched the webinar, we had a, a bunch of, you know, uh, as we yeah. kept receiving the registration, we also had a few questions which uh, which the audiences had uh, sent out. So I, I'll just uh, go through each one of them. Sure. Uh, the first question came uh, and talked about analytics. And how data gathering through EMR and uh, what is, how is analytics helping the data gathering through EMR and what is the way to increase value for pharma and improve healthcare using data analytics? Any examples that you've seen? Well, I think, you know, now I think all the hospitals and all the groups which are coming up, there is a, always electronic sort of support system which they are going in right from day one. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you really look at our example, Max, I think we started almost 10 years back, mm. you know, mm. um, uh, electronic uh, uh, record keeping. And mm. I think it, it's really a wonderful thing. Mm. Previously, everything was there, but we could not sort of, um, uh, sort of, you know, utilize it mm. because it was too difficult, too cumbersome. Mm. But now uh, we are able to use those uh, systems mm. in a uh, predictive manner, in a preventive manner, and also into providing a personalized care mm. Mm. to our patients and the families. Mm. So this is there. Now another added advantage is uh, publication mm. and also knowing the trend of a diseases, mm. which really helps uh, the hospitals, mm. helps the medical personnel, mm. how things are moving, how things are going. And uh, this way, in last at least 10 years in our Max Institute, uh, we have seen that it has really played a very important role. The inventory goes down, mm. the uh, you know supply chain uh, management is easier and simpler. A lot of uh, things which were, which could have caused problems, mm. Uh, in terms of uh, mismanagement, mm. um, wrong medical, mm. uh, uh, the medicine given to the wrong patient or mm. this operations, mm. I think those can be almost brought down to zero mm. Mm. with these methods. So I'll just ask one leading question yeah. is, do you see when you know when when investors are looking at India, uh, where there's a problem, there's a solution and where there's a solution, there's a need for money. Yeah. So. What do you think is a trend as far as the diseases are concerned? And we've seen cancer, you know, becoming so rampant in the past decade or so. Uh, you alluded to some lifestyle diseases, but what do you think are are going to be the bigger problems for Indians in the recent? Uh, See, I think this is a very typical uh, way any country grows, any developing countries becomes a developed country, because once you take care of the hygiene, once you take care of the vaccination, those many diseases are prevented. So for example, India is now polio free which, uh, country, mm. you know, mm. which used to have incidence of polio. We have a smallpox free country. Mm. We used to, many years back, we used to see vector borne diseases more. Mm. Now the, they are reducing in numbers and, you know, a few percentage is there now. And I'm sure those will also disappear uh, over a period of time. Hand hygiene mm. is becoming more important. You see, mm general public using hand hygiene. So uh, it's a typical way things mm. move. 
the lifestyle diseases become more. Mm. With longevity mm. comes the malignancies and the cancers, you mm. know, the uh, so-called geriatric problems, you know. Mm. Uh, carcinoma of the prostate is one of the very um, uh, typical example. The longer is the life, the more chances of carcinoma prostate, you know, mm. which used to be seen uh, very rarely. Mm. So these are the diseases which are bound to come. Mm. And we have to, and this also increases the burden on the preventive aspect and also the diagnostic, preventive diagnostic aspect. Mm. So say for example, uh, mammography now. Mm. Mammography used to be, uh, you know, a couple of decades back was available only in the few centers, you know. Mm. Now mammography has become a routine test, pap smear, mm. Uh, for uterine malignancy. So I think cervical cancers, etc., the incidents have really gone down, mm. you know. Mm. So this is what we have to see. It's not, I wouldn't say it's a positive development, but I think it's a predictive development. Mm. We can predict that these are the areas which are going to do. So newer, this thing would like, newer groups of hospitals are likely to give more, uh, more room, uh, capital mm. for oncology. You know, they are going to give more for cosmetic surgeries, you mm. know, people are becoming conscious. Mm. Nobody would get operated for um, cosmetics previously. Mm. Operation was supposed to be only life-saving operations. Mm. But now people are moving on that side. Mm. So these are the high, well, uh, high ticket uh, surgeries and high ticket diseases which um, needs attention. Mm. And I'm sure government can never provide that. Mm. So there's a big vacuum mm. as well as a scope. So my question, sir, there is uh, uh, that you know because I, I I can see a question talking about doctors uh, in particular. And you you are sort of senior yeah. doctor in the system, but uh, there is a and there is a very clear uh, profitability angle to some of these diseases. For example, you know when a patient comes for a dengue, he would not get a bed because it's not a it's not a very yeah, expensive yeah. disease. But if somebody comes for a cancer, you know there are there's clearly far more monetizable yeah. opportunity there. So, uh, do you think that the profits, of course, the problem is that needs to be cured. Mm. In the cure itself, in the process of curing this, do you think that profits are higher, the investments are required sure. here? It is, it is. And is there, a, is there a trajectory that you see? Do you see these profits coming down as the kind of... Uh, well, I think in certain branches, the profits are not coming down. Okay. Um, I think, so if we take example of the cardiac diseases, I think cardiac diseases, because of some policies which changed uh, by the government of India mm. stand. Mm. So the profits came down. Mm. But it's not going to stay like that because mm. if it stays like that, the profitability, the hospitals are not profitable. So government would not uh, interfere with the profits of the hospital mm. to a certain extent. Mm. Yeah, you know, profiteering, possibly, mm. yes. Mm. Uh, though possibly that will not be allowed by the government. Mm. But uh, uh, Having a profit out of it, it's, I don't think there should be a problem. Mm. And uh, as I said, in prevention, I think the preventive aspect has really gone up. Mm. Every uh, uh, There is a protocol for mammography, there is a protocol for colonoscopy, there is a protocol for endoscopy, pro protocol for ultrasound, mm. which more and more organizations are following, which more and more families are also getting into it because of uh, maybe the social media and uh, the advertisements etc which are coming so i see a big potential and a big gap one one last question on this particular topic sir is that uh, the standardization you know the standardization when it comes to pricing uh, particularly in diagnostics we see a lot of variation in the pricing which are charged by say a tier a versus a tier c hmm. how do you think uh, the market or the economy or the, the demography per se is reacting to that and where can we balance that? Where is the trust? Well, I see, you know, so the problem happens then when the person who is living in a B town, when he comes to the metros, he finds things to be very expensive because he compares it from the B town. As I said, there is a big vacuum and this big uh, demand mm. in uh, deficient uh, thing which is there mm. is that we are not concentrating on the B town. Mm. And second secret in medical profession 
for that matter in other business also is the volume mm. if you if you have a higher volume mm. uh, then the profitability goes up mm. uh, i would say the groups of the hospital which have got more number of hospitals mm. more number of beds they are making more profits mm. as compared to the small group of uh, mm. uh, small groups mm. of hospitals mm. so i think this is where the p investors are coming in you know mm. Mm. so those are the areas which needs to be focused which needs to be concentrated and mm. needs to be addressed so clearly in that case if you are thinking about investing in india think yeah. big Think yeah. volumes and yes, not small. Yes, That's where you're definitely. going to get your money and the returns on your money. Yeah. So the last question that I have before we open the floor is that uh, again going back to the doctor part. Mm. Uh, of course, the MRs find doctors uh, difficult to be to to track, but for startups particularly, we've we've uh, we've got the feedback that there is a challenge to get the technology adopted by doctors in hospitals. How can I get convince a doctor to adopt my technology? Well, I think now the doctors are open. quite open you know okay. previously used to say i say like that but now i think you know we are all uh, relying and we are all practicing uh, evidence based medicine mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. so and it's very becoming with time i think it's becoming very difficult with internet and this and that mm-hmm. not to practice evidence based mm-hmm. previously the doctor was the only source of information mm-hmm. now there is innumerable source of information mm-hmm. right or wrong You know, the wrong information is also coming up. But if I say uh, public is not uh, going to listen to what you feel that is correct, mm. I would say the evidence, what the evidence shows. Mm. So in all our uh, uh, experience, what we do is always make sure that we follow a protocol. Mm. And the hospital administrations are also uh, trying to emphasize on the medical staff mm. to follow the evidence. uh mm. given to you know what is evidence medicine mm. Mm. so i think uh, in near time more and more uh, people will adopt to the technology mm. definitely they will adopt fantastic so you have uh, one of india's uh, leading doctors telling you that he's open to adopting technologies that you bring to the table as long as there is evidence to support them so just uh, i'll i'll sum up our conversation uh, particularly for our investor friends out there and who are interested in knowing how attractive is india as a market for investment uh, as uh, particularly from a healthcare perspective we've talked about number one which is uh, when we talk about preventive healthcare is a huge opportunity more yeah. so in the metros and the entire ecosystem uh second we talked about rural areas where primary and secondary healthcare becomes very very important and uh, also bringing in organization collaboration with metros for tertiary care yeah. and therefore you can increase the overall economics of your, uh, the operations uh the third bit that we talked about was medical devices and uh, credible economical devices available widely and as we said we talk we are talking about volumes education for healthcare we alluded to that uh, briefly insurance although regulated is a big opportunity particularly the uh, the newer areas uh, and uh, medical tourism so finally again once again the messages think big and any uh, messages or any closing remarks before we open uh, the floor for questions well i say um, uh, if you want to look at the country try to assess uh, political economic Uh, approach mm. by this is what i would look at from any country or any government uh, i feel that uh, is quite favorable and uh, is a strong democracy uh, it, uh, it cannot disappear overnight mm. so we should have faith in the government and the democracy and the way um, uh, india has shown in the past um, the strength Uh, there may be a little bit of ups and downs, but there is no dramatic um, changes which take place, mm. and that give, should give confidence as it gives to us. You know, mm. we also have a small little uh, areas where we have to provide confidence to the population and also to the political um, hierarchy, mm. and that is also our role as a. and maybe clinical people to look at um, uh, at our democracy because they will be interested in uh, proving the population that they are interested in their health and their uh, well being mm. 
and that is what will also compel the government mm. to look at the health system you know? great so i think there is a big thumbs up for the government as well as the overall ecosystem here uh, i have my colleague here anukriti and uh, would you help us with opening the floor for questions please so we have four questions there on sure. Sure. can we see them on the screen great sir let me just quickly read that out to you uh, the first question is from a gentleman called vikas uh, he says what are some of the latest technologies that are being used in laparoscopic and bariatric procedures across the world are these technologies currently being implemented in india well i think uh, i would say currently but i would say that say for example robotics so robotics is there for quite some time and uh, we have been using robotics uh stapling for example is an expensive way of uh, doing laparoscopy but i think we are doing it the camera system when i started 30 years back laparoscopy we were using a single chip camera now we are using a high definition 3d and 4k and uh, 8k cameras you know so the technology is uh, changing <clears throat> and we are very happy and we are very proud that many of the technologies are coming to india much before the western world Mm-hmm. because of the volume because of the experts are level in the country for evolution mm-hmm. uh, evaluating mm-hmm. those technology mm-hmm. so we feel very proud we feel very happy mm-hmm. that uh, the uh, talents in the country are recognized the hospitals are of a very high standard mm-hmm. i'm not saying all the hospitals but i'm sure there's a trend when you have a good hospital other hospitals are also like to to um, Uh, compete and come to that level mm-hmm. so this is a <coughs> good side mm-hmm. so i think today in many areas i think uh, technologically mm-hmm. if you talk pure technology mm-hmm. and uh, the important point which makes us proud is we are more more dexterous mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. maybe artist maybe artisan maybe surgeon maybe Uh, even a carpenter you know we are we are more dexterous genetically mm-hmm. as compared to the other parts you know uh, and this is true for asia mm-hmm. so i think that's uh, uh, added by uh, a good uh, dexterity added and supported mm-hmm. by the gadgets like robots and things like that it it's a, it creates a, a big synergy mm-hmm. and it's a win win situation and ultimately as i said the doctors are benefited the hospitals are benefited the patients are benefited the countries benefited the nation is benefited mm. the subcontinent mm. so this continues mm. and this is not by choice it's a need the health care is a need it's not by choice that you go to a restaurant you know so that will compel and there will be no choice whether we do it or we don't do it there will be very little choice for either the government or the uh, investors to get into this earlier the better you know you enter early mm-hmm. you can <clears throat> uh, have uh, uh, good outcomes in a shorter period of time yeah. excellent so we we are clearly talking to the authority in laparoscopic and bariatric procedures so uh, i think that's a much larger question and you yeah. can probably have a, a leading conversation with dr chobe post uh, this as well but uh, but as you said that uh, stapling and some of the other aspects that you mentioned and yes they are currently being implemented but there is clearly a room to go and where investors can definitely look at i hope that answers the question let's have the second question please So great. So we have Ria Singhania. Uh, Ria asks, given the precision of robots in surgeries, why is there still some hesitation in adoption of robots? There are many procedures that require high degree of precision, and we still see surgeons performing the same. Well, I think uh, <clears throat> I would like to add. I think uh, I may differ a little bit mm-hmm. that robots give you precision. Robots gives you a precision where. your wrist is not handicap you know the biggest handicap uh, i won't say handicap but you know like i say in sometimes your handicap is your wrist movement which is only up to this much where the robot wrist can go up to this much okay. so robot is at uh, added advantage mm-hmm. when you're talking on a limited space okay. for example oral surgery mm-hmm. so the robot will be more useful the pelvic surgery you know some surgeries and uh, that will give more 
precision because the robotic wrist can move. But we should not forget, you know, if you are flying an aircraft or you're driving a car, the driver is important. You know, you, if you're driving a safe car, driver is important. So if you're driving a safe car, it does not mean that you bang the car, you know. But in a situation where the car gets banged, or the passengers are protected, you know. Mm. So robot, we cannot make a blanket statement that robot gives more precision. In a situations which are very specific. Second, we should not forget that robots are very expensive too. Mm. You know, it may cost you maybe 12, 15 crores of rupees. Mm. So that much investment for one particular so unless it is a multi-modality use of that robot. So, for example, carcinoma prostate. Robot has got an edge over the... Because you are doing operating in the pelvis. Mm. There are both which doesn't allow your hand movement. So robot has got uh, some advantage. Mm. But it can only become popular when there are millions of robots which are available, mm. which is not possible. At the same time, we should also understand that every robotic arm is disposable. Every So every time you change. Mm. So suppose one surgery, if you're talking in India, I think uh, 0.1 million mm. rupees is the disposable. Mm. So it cannot be done for common surgeries mm. and it cannot be done by everybody. But yes, robot adds, say, uh, value to the surgeon, mm -hmm. not the other way around, mm. you know. Because the hand movements are reflected. So whatever movement you are doing, mm. that is what is reflected on that. So it's, it's like a staring. If you move more staring, mm. so exactly the same way. Mm. So robots are moved. I think it provides more comfort to the surgeon. Mm. And in a handicapped situation or a limited space, robot definitely. But it does not mean that if the robot is not used, the surgeries are not given. Mm. It may be few percentage and few tertiary care places where robot has a definite role. So, sir, in, just a leading question to that. In the in the laparoscopic and the bariatric space itself, do you what is the percentage penetration do you see of robots of any form, not in totality, maybe in, in partial use? Of see, if you're asking me about uh, the India, bariatric India. surgery, mm -hmm. it may have a very limited role. Okay. Why? Because the bariatric surgery is a surgery of stapling. So stapling itself is robot, you know, mm -hmm. you have to just fire it, you know, place it and fire it. Mm -hmm. So surgeon is not doing it. If the surgeon is sitting on a console, mm -hmm. the staplers are fired by somebody else. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I would say in a bariatric surgery, I'm more comfortable firing that stapler and allowing that stapler myself mm -hmm. next to the patient. Mm -hmm. But yes, if it comes to odd stitching, mm -hmm. Then I will use the robot, but I think bariatric surgery is a very, very limited role. Okay. So on on that area, <coughs> the availability, the economics, and the cost of operations uh, is what is. Uh, and insurance doesn't insurance. pay for that. And insurance doesn't pay for that. So the patients are also reluctant <laughs> to use. Yeah, that. and uh, you have to see capital investments are too huge. Every case disposable are too expensive. Remember, you're asking that question to a doctor. So let's move to the next question, please. Okay, so uh, the next question is from Mr. Basant, and he says, why is there no joint up thinking? Example, why are there no national guidelines for diagnostics and treatments allowing individuals to do as they feel like? Which is a very valid question, which talks about yeah. the standardization yeah. that we were talking about. Well, I think this um, may be true in a smaller group of this thing, but I think looking at the corporate sector and looking at the chain of hospitals, we have fairly uh, fairly well let down evidence-based protocols. Having said that, we must understand that the medical science is always against nature. Mm. Medical science is not man-made. Mm. Medical science has to follow the nature. Mm. And nature wants something and the medical science wants something. So, for example, medical one, say nature wants to kill a person by cancer mm -hmm. and medical science wants to kill the cancer cell by chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. So you cannot expect chemotherapy to be polite, gentle, you know, mm -hmm. it's a destructive medication. Mm -hmm. The oncosurgery could be destructive, 
to remove a part of it which has got a cancer. Mm. So there's a different approach. Mm. So whenever we are going to a doctor, whenever we are taking help from a medical professional, mm. we must be sure that the judgment and the things suggested by the doctor is against nature. Mm. So you are not likely <clears throat> to always be uh, winning over the nature. One day you have to give up. And that's what happens with bacteria. You know, like you have antibiotics to kill the bacteria, but there are so many bacteria which, you know, come, they refuse to respond to the antibiotics and then we lose the patients, you know. But sir, if I, if I talk from an investor standpoint, yeah. I think that's a very valid question that, the, uh, that our, uh, our member here has raised is also about you know, healthcare in India, particularly, and with the advent of the social media and the amplification of, of individual comments and experiences, uh, there is a huge trust, trust issue. There is a big credibility issue, and it, it doesn't leave any anybody. I mean, it's uh, the biggest yeah. names have been, uh, you know, have been talked about. So, when an investor ca- comes in, how can how can he or she prevent himself or take decisions uh, to make the investment in a particular brand? What are the parameters of trust, parameters of performance? Well, I think, you know, the parameters are, as I said, you know, when we just talked about the guidelines, I think practically India is following most of the standard guidelines for hypertension, cholesterol, diabetes management, bariatric surgery. These are standard protocols that you do this, you do the investigation. Same way, whenever the, any group is going, I think the in a medical industry is a very... Um, uh, different industry and where the clinical side stronger you know so if you have I generally suggest that you know like it all depends on the medical the line in which you want to go suppose you want to go to the oncology I think you should have a very good group uh, of oncologists you know whom you uh, support and whom you bring in and then follow what they say. So that is the reason why I think it all depends on which vertical you want to go. Though generalism may not sustain now. That you say, okay, I want to have a general hospital. No, it's not. If you want to have a transplant hospital, I think you should have all uh, top-notch guys in the transplant uh, group to come there. So that is how the success will lie. Okay, you cannot spread it to too wide and too far. You know? So trust will always be uh, uh, and the standardization, but there are guidelines. Yeah, 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 there are guidelines. So we'll just take, I think we're at the, at the, uh, at the, at the, at just the end of our, uh, our allocated today. We'll just take one last question. If Anukuti will allow us. Great. So what are your thoughts on the growth of medical tourism in India, particularly for surgeries such as laparoscopy? There is a total vacuum mm. and there is a huge potential. Mm. Mm. Now what happened, I think medical tourism, we are doing very well, by the way. So I'm not saying that medical tourism has multiplied mm. in the thing and multiplied because of infrastructure, the good airport, the good connectivity. But somewhere I think we went wrong. Because the the mediators, the facil- facilitators, were not the professional facilitators. You know, sometimes uh, this is what I think is needs to be corrected. Mm. We have got a good institutions. We have got good doctors. Mm. But sometimes the the organizations or the the what should I say the group of people who are facilitating that mm. may or may not put them into the right hands. Mm. Mm. That is one. Mm. Second, I think, is uh, the, say, for example, last couple of years, we have seen the e-visas mm. given to so many countries, mm. you know, mm. which has really changed uh, the situation. Mm. So I think it's a ease of not medical management because I think whatever uh, uh, tourism, which tourists which are coming, we are getting in the Western tourism uh, tourists also, uh, medical tourists, I would say, were coming here mm. and they greatly appreciate the doctors because, first of all, we are able to communicate mm. freely with them, uh, which is not available. Every doctor, every team is available on 
cell phone and uh, investigations all can be done the most intricate operations can be done mm. with a lot of authenticity and very good excellent clinical outcomes mm. you know services are very good but what happens i think provided they go and they are channelized into the right direction in the right hospitals with the right group of people mm. so that is going to really um, uh, uh, take a very very uh, our is it's going to be exploding now mm. you know so in that it's sense a huge potential of that and 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 perhaps as we were talking sometime uh, yeah. back that can there be an oio like model in the yeah, in the sure. aggregation so i think aggregation is what is uh, missing what putting the yeah, ball on absolutely, the same platform absolutely. perfect thank you very much uh, dr chobe it was a pleasure talking to you thank, thank you. you very much for your time and thank you everybody who joined us uh, today uh, on this webinar and uh, hope you enjoyed uh, the conversation we look forward to your leading thoughts and questions as well if, you, if there's anything that you would like to talk to us about please feel free to write to us and uh, our contact details will be shared uh, with you shortly you can also write to uh, us particularly at lets.speak@speakin.co.in that is l e t s dot speak at speak in dot go dot in we look forward to hearing from you and thank you very much once again for joining thank you so thank much you. thank you very much thank, thank you thank you